okay. We're fine. We're okay. It always takes me two hours for my voice to wake up, man. <clears throat> All right, that is a lot of ratings. Hang on a second. Let's see if this is working. It's working. Okay, nose is functional. We're doing it. And nothing else it'll say. Four unique games and nothing else. Stop asking. most interested in here probably the indiana jones game right generally interested dude there's a future where killer instinct is actually on one of these oh my god that'd be so sick the only time ki ever got like a spot at anything was the uh the, the initial reveal so at e3 and you, you know the rom trailer an rpg avowed Avowed is an adventure into the heart of the living lands, oh, oh a frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover a secret at the heart of the living lands. At Obsidian, we love creating worlds with deep themes. Last Digital Foundry podcast, play, Alex said they should put KI on activity. PlayStation. Yeah, no shit. And Avowed is no different. We set out to blend the believable and fantastical to give players a world and experience like no other. It's colorful. I get the vibrant, avowed game strange. mixed up it's with the game the that settings in the Rare is working on now, right? There's going to be a lot of great secrets to discover, one of which has a really personal connection to you as the player character, and you're going to have a great time getting to know those secrets and leaving your mark on the world. What the hell's the name of it? And when it comes to encounters, our combat ever wild, yeah. Moment to moment fun that comes with action oriented gameplay and the depth and breadth of choice that you get with an RPG. Here to talk more about Avowed's combat is Gabriel Paramo, gameplay director. Here at Obsidian, our team's overarching goal is to empower you with choice. So we developed a flexible combat system that allows you to quickly swap from spellcasting and sharpshooting to melee combat. We want to give you the freedom to mix and match your loadout to fit the way you want to play from moment to moment uninterrupted. For all battles, you can combine a variety of weapons, attacks, and abilities for tactical advantages against a wide range of enemy types. Obsidian's last game it's was not um, just hacking and slashing. You're making real was time it decisions Outer Wilds? about when to use your abilities. Because these are the these are like the Fallout uh, Fallout carries, New Vegas devs, right? Attacks. Outer Worlds. Thank you. Sorry. If you choose to approach combat with a one-handed wand, it feels quick and snappy when dealing damage to enemies at mid-range. Using the Tanglefoot ability, you can stop enemies in their tracks, giving you the opportunity to focus on weaker or tougher combatants in an intentional and controlled manner. It's important to pay attention to the types of enemies you're dealing with. Oh, some wasn't it grounded? Some defensive, <clears throat> some are brutishly difficult. Am I thinking of and different others, devs? Sure or do they make both? Or their healing capabilities will put you in a tough spot. To help with they the did both. Okay. You will face, they busy. They provide customizable loadouts that can be quickly switched during combat. That means you can play however you want. Equip a sword and shield and charge into battle. Dual wield pistols and control the encounter mid range. Or even dual wield wands to feel like a gunslinging mage. You could use your enchanted wand to freeze enemies. These guys are like very much like weapons power attack to shatter them. Other universe Bethesda, you know, keep you constantly engaged as battles unfold by creating a balance between pressure and manageability during combat. Players will have ample choices for how to build and progress <laughs> literally in the world of the living lands. <laughs> oh, is that more of a literal thing and instead of an interpretation? In many diverse regions. Some quests in a vow will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences. Like this side quest you may encounter in Shatterscarp the third region you'll explore on your journey through the living lands. 
as you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. Brazio! Four of us. Manu, Kiri, Naoki, and me. Training under Captain Ruiki. Trying to keep Thirdborn safe. In other words, you're a gang of vigilantes. Not that I'm one to judge. Here. Take my badge. Take everyone's. Our families deserve to know we fought and died for them. Make the right and then he also dies. Seems. We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in complicated situations. My, my squad and I rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorabs. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone, but I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often and loud. Wait, if you found Sergeant Asui, why is he not here with you? What happened? At the end of the quest, you have a choice. When you confront Private Dumb Naoki, baby. if you believe the story he's told you, you can hand you over dumb the baby. and let him go back home. You're right. Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? It's not my fault. It's funny, like, a lot of no, Xbox they, games now really remind me of, like, mid-2000s era, like, I'll PC games. And not in terms of quality, but just in terms of, like, confront him, if you what games they're the approaching. The battle, it it reminds me more of what Xbox was like in the uh, way, early 2000s with the original we'll Xbox, the you know? Where they had, like, a lot of games like that. Made during this quest. And Creating not games that were, like, focused on, like, you know, big third-party games and stuff like that. Art director Matt Hansen and the team which is which is obviously what the Xbox unique, 360 is and dynamic visual like games style. like Jade Empire yeah exactly we dude we like Jade Empire and like Morrowind and stuff rich, like that and KOTOR weird, those are the games wonderful. that defined the OG Xbox to me it was Sega games funny enough but real world cultures helping it really modern day Xbox kind of reminds me of that I'm not saying the, the quality of any of those games is bad. Some of those games are amazing on original Xbox, right? It's just a lot different than what, like, Sony and Nintendo are doing. The feel of their games is, like, just a bit different. A lot of, like, Western RPGs, yeah, you know? From luxuriant forests to volcanic wastes. Fable, you know? Old Fable. is a conflux of storied landscapes. All of the regions have a lot of special things associated with them. But I have a deep yeah, it does give Xbox more of an identity. I just, you know, you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp. You might notice off in the distance. A it does feel like third color. party and Xbox By is sort of missing. From Maybe it's just me and I have to think. But that's because there's like almost no third parties anymore, bro. They like scooped them all up. Everything has been eaten. There for life, for adventure, and Xbox is danger. third party now. They just have like everything. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't wait for you to explore the living lands when Avowed launches this fall. They have stated publicly, that's cool art. They've stated publicly that they plan to embrace more third and put their games on other platforms. That's good. That's actually good. Xbox games showing up on other stuff, you know, we make fun of Halo showing up on PlayStation, but I mean, that might actually be kind of great. <laughs> This Hi, game's I'm been Don in there for a while. Studio head here at Ninja Theory in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2, and the team is working hard to bring you an unforgettable journey into Senua's unique world and her battle for survival, where we have once again combined high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter, narrative-led experience that focuses on the things that we really care about, and that we hope you care about too. You see how the pitiless world stamps you down. 
Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source, in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. Senua herself has grown since the first Yo, Star-Lord, thank you. She's made peace with her past and is no longer in such fear of her visions and voices. While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way, some of which will value her unique perspective and others who will reject it. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. In the game, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland on the trail of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the story, we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise of the Droiga, a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. Droiga! I'm getting God of War flashbacks. Will make new enemies and also new allies who will come to see her unique perspective as a beacon of hope. And she'll discover along with us how this viewpoint can have its advantages. Senua is a Celtic warrior who experiences psychosis, seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well as people with lived experience of psychosis. What does that mean? What does that mean? This is the headphone game, right, chat? Players will find the first game was 100% like a headphone game. Seeking answers from patterns and signs that Senua sees in her own unique way, and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. Because you hear like voices talking to you in each ear and stuff like that, and it like collides with gameplay stuff. <laughs> On Saga, we've taken everything to the next level. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew, and a new cast. We spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? Is this game <laughs> we have really anticipated or overhyped? Um, some... One of our key so you have to understand, like, to devs are gauging how good games actually are. It and some of the early buzz from the for this game, game but it's um, not just coming from devs, but from internal testing and like all this stuff and what people are saying to, we other, to, to some others. She's fighting for survival. Uh, I've heard about this game being a potential goatee for 2024. Early, like early nomination, which is like weird that Xbox would do that again, you know, from Hi-Fi Rush or something like that. So apparently it's supposed to be pretty good, no, no, Senua, considering the first game was also very highly regarded. Her instincts are amazing, and she really we'll see. doesn't you know, need much help. It's always hard me. to tell with Xbox On stuff. On stage, our main focus is storytelling. So I get to watch the actors and see all the beautiful expressions on their faces, and then I have to wait a little while, and then I get to see that all again in-game, in costume, on location, everything. It's, it's a great experience, a great process. Every discipline in the studio is unified in achieving a deep level of immersion to help suspend your disbelief and pull you into Senua's story. I think Simmons said, uh, I think Simmons played we were lucky enough the first to one. Do a few references he said it was really cool. You have to but it's like, it's like a little game. I think you can finish it in potentially like incredible. one stream. And you see a scene or you see a small section of the game and you're like, yeah, that, that works, that's amazing. Bullshit, those shots we were just seeing were real, right? Senua experiences reality differently, and a part of right? this manifest in the voices That shit was real, right? These voices come to life. Yeah, that was real. <laughs> okay. It provides a good representation of this type of auditory hallucinations. As we focus in immersion, uh, binaural audio is perfect for this because through headphones, you surround yourself in a three-dimensional space. In the first game, we only applied to the voices that Senua listens in her head. In this game, through a special audio technology and uh, some extra little things within the game, there is music that is binaural. Every single sound has the potential to be binaural, so everything is specialized around you, and it's a very beautiful experience. What will they do to her? What will 
But if you don't like headphones, you should take each one of your speakers and duct tape them to your head. To our emotions fast and deep. It's not only about quality, it's about personality. So when you listen to Hellblade, you know it's Hellblade. That's what you should be doing right now. I hear a lot of people do that with my voice when I'm streaming. Which is why I like to cough directly into the mic. Their depth, their meaning in the music, it really connects with her game. The binaural audio really kicks in good. Really special. We are also working with a heavy metal singer, throat singers, and our very own Furies. They sing so beautiful, and we add that binaural touch of music. So this all creates a very immersive and a very special and unique experience. Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. And that's our aim in Senua Saga Hellblade 2, is to not only see where Senua goes next, but to deliver something really meaningful for our players. My hope is that they will really connect to Senua as a character, and even if they can't really relate to what she's going through, maybe they know someone that relates to that character and they can then understand that person better. Well, I don't want to sound cheesy, but in a way I'm Senua, right? She exists and doesn't. It exists through all of our work, through every ninja. So we all are Senua, and we are creating this character that grows and grows and grows and grows and keep growing and keep changing. No, so I'm Spartacus. That makes it real. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. I'm so proud of the love care and passion our team here at Ninja Theory are putting into Senua Saga help I like making jokes that are really our tailored to not only for the broad range audience play, especially the the zoomers that leaves you thinking you know Spartacus joke from our combat gameplay done. through to our action set pieces from our cinematic engagement to our rating 99% in service of Senua's journey a journey million followers because of the Spartacus joke let's fucking 21st. go it's in May Depending on how dry uh, May is, we don't know, dude. There's like, what the hell's coming out after, uh, like, Dragon's Dogma? What the hell's after April? Depending on that, I might just, like, dedicate a stream to playing the first one, throw some headphones on my face, and then, you know, try the second one. What? What is happening? Square Enix? Oh, this is cr What the hell? Okay, so they're talking about... Uh-uh? Uh-huh? There's their mana game? This mana game is what I wanted a uh, potential, like, even Final Fantasy VI or... Greetings, friggin' uh, Chrono Trigger remake. It My would look pretty good. My name is Masaru Oyamada, producer for the mana series here at Square Enix. Well, this is kind of big. Yeah, Xbox and Square Enix over the past, like, six months have had some pretty big moments together. Between stuff like this and, you know them literally CEO shaking hands on stage during the FF14 event. That was pretty huge. Translate I am. Uh, the stuff at the bottom I'm, is what I'm doing. That's my doing. Interesting. It's a straight up like action game. Huh. Oh, funny. It's just like an action game now. Hello, I'm Koichi Shi from Gretz. I'm so happy to introduce the newest game in the Mana series to Xbox players. Goddamn, look at this guy's jacket. Who invited the Drip Lord? 
すでにイメージができていたものもあります。今作では、はじめはドット絵から出てきたモンスターたちをどのような形で最新化して、政権伝説、ビジョンズ・オブ・マナに落とし込むか、デザインの方向性からモデルの完成イメージまでを監修する立場でプロジェクトに参加しました。政権伝説ファイナルファンタジー外伝を作っていた頃から自分の頭の中ではモンスターたちは立体的に生き生きと動いてこれまで自分の頭の中ではそれをどうやって当時の技術で表現できるかにこだわって作ってきました最新作では政権伝説のモンスターたちのただ可愛いだけではなく恐ろしさをしっかりと表現できるバトル中はとても大きモンスターたちの表情にも注目してくださいこれまで「聖剣伝説」シリーズには空を旅する海を渡る手助けをしてくれる頼もしい仲間たちがいましたが今作には広大なフィールドで描かれた仲間が登場します。あなたはマナゲームを作っていないので、ああ、ターンベースで描かれたのでは、ターンベースで描かれたのでは、I'm curious what Mana fans are feeling like about the game going like just like a straight up action game now. Oh, were they more real timey? Interesting. So it was just like you just ran around. Because the engagement sort of reminds me of Chrono Trigger, where it's like field enemies, you run in, and then a battle engages. So you're just saying there would be no battle engagement. The game sort of plays like a Zelda or like a Lundra. See, chat, I, I'm not, I haven't been a JRPG guy for a long time, but I came from the goddamn heyday era of this shit, so I have a lot to pull from in terms of turn based RPGs. So it's more of like a Zelda Alundra game. Okay. So it's just a huge scale version of that. That's pretty sick. This is much bigger of like a, uh, a project than. It seems like they would do. I played Alundra. I didn't play Alundra too. Yeah, the remaster was kind of like. Remember it kind of having mixed reviews? Because the remaster was from the SNES game. It was like a Secret of Mana or something like that remake. People were kind of like indifferent about it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty sick. 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 Do you have any ARPGs you want remade? Yes.、Um, one specifically. And it's called Final Fantasy Tactics. The thing, the thing I like the most about FF7 and FF Tactics chat is that, in my opinion, those old games are still really fun to play. Like, at least to me. The, the materia shit in OG FF7 makes that game like really replayable. And tactics is like infinitely replayable with how you can approach it. God damn, Stoneproof, thanks for the 20 gift subs. So I actually, I actually have fun leveling up in those games and getting new shit. I don't mind the turn based sort of grindiness that they sort of naturally encumber. They're fun. Tactics Insane Difficulty Mod? No, I haven't tried that. I mean, it's just like the game that I played on Xbox user. And it's just like the game that I played on Xbox user. And it's just like the game that I played on Xbox user. This definitely, you know, changes that perspective we were saying earlier about, like, you know, Xbox feeling like early 2000s. Now it feels like we're on the Super Nintendo. Or PS1, you know? Good on you. Good on you, Xbox. You get it. We got any other announcements from Square? You gonna announce 7 Remake on Xbox? Nope. We're just gonna move away from that now.
What is Oxide working on? We're going to get our Hello. 26 inches Welcome of Sephiroth. Games. Huh? We founded the studio in 2013 with our decades of personal experience building some of the most beloved strategy games of all time, like Civilization V. We came together to create something new and innovative in a genre we all love. Our history untold is the game we right. dreamt of making. Again, Our I mean, is an homage just to go back to gamers, what I was saying earlier, gamers, Forex like gamers. there's a huge spot on modern day Xbox for strat games, life, right? Where you explore the world, expand your nation, govern your people. Between like the Age of Empires games and all that shit. Stage. I mean, again, more of the same. Very With similar Aura, to like to challenge some of the early 2000s PC stuff. Push it forward in a modern, empowering, and truly compelling and approachable way. I get it. It's for on example, other consoles and it has been forever. On display in the office, but it's like a huge part of like Xbox, you know. Add to the soundtrack and expand the game and make it really good. <laughs> Hi, Dan. That's Dan. We started in his basement. It's been an amazing process to see from concept to completion. And now he's fired. We started small, <laughs> building a robust game engine, questioning our design assumptions, and prototyping out features. Rediscovering what made Yeah, I never really have cared for these type of games. games I've played um, uh, AOE 2. The historical grand strategy Weirdly game enough, I played AOE 2 world, in my tech class in high school. And chart your own path to becoming I'm carbon dating myself here, planet. chat. For Aura, we I played AOE 2 in high school with outcomes that encourage exploration um, and I enjoyed it because I was just kind of like open for anything when you're like a teenager you'll just like just give me anything other than this uh, this brutal hellscape that is life right and so and like and playing like any kind of game was like game interesting their unique perspective and not just ours so I mean and finally we knew that for players it was fun. Really impact of their decisions they would need to see AOE 2 stream win I'm good bro itself. I don't know if I need to go back, but it's one of the first differences you'll see when you dive into Aura. I never played SimCity. It's a procedurally generated alternate Earth. Bursting What's the other one? Intuitive, Civ. I played Civilization. What, what, what Civ was out in like the late '90s? It was like Civ teams. Two. The living world. The late '90s or like the early 2000s? The I think I played Civ Two on a friend's computer. They can see everything from the settling of the wilderness. Never played a Warcraft game, old school Warcraft. It was probably Civ 2. To the thousands of Never played a SimCity. I had a friend that was playing SimCity on SNES. Truly occupying and I was like, world, what the fuck is this? Put a killer instinct and just threw it out the window. The vision of Took that cartridge was like, what the fuck? Spit on it. Flop. Went through a window. This Stuck in KI. To win a game of Aura, Players will compete with their rivals to build the most influential, impressive, and important nation the world has ever known. This is measured by prestige, the player's score that proves their worth as a leader. The prestige system gives players the chance to decide what kind of leader they want to be. Do they want to pursue great works of arts and culture? Military might. Scientific advancement. The choice is theirs. In Aura, there are no set victory conditions. Players get to decide what is most important to them and focus and prioritize on those goals while still being able to win the game. Personally, when I play Aura, I like to build triumphs. Triumphs are our collection of incredible... The basing of this direct is pretty good. From throughout human there hasn't history. been a ton of stuff that I'm like super interested in, but... They're hard to this build, isn't bad. But worth it. Giving huge There's clearly Xbox is doing shit. Abilities <clears throat> to the nation that constructs them. Another My thoughts on Halo? Halo needs to impress me for me to be interested in it. Crafting system. The crafting system we tried Halo Infinite a little bit multiplayer when it came out for a day and I was kind of good. Genre, and then we played a little bit of the online before they had co-op. The right I'm sorry, the uh, campaign the before they had co-op. And, and it was okay. The outcome or reward of something like an important improvement or that was about it. Just changes the challenge that I feel like the last time I really had fun with Halo was co-op Halo 4. Plays out in Aura at a national scale, with players honing and combining the natural resources they harvest into all manner of goods and components. Those are the foundation for everything. And that was like specifically trade, the campaign. To improving their cities and citizens' lives, and even manufacturing the weapons necessary to draft military units. What's your opinion on Star Ocean? The only thing I know about Star Ocean planet. is that the Every ending of one of those games is that it's a video, we're living in a video game. And not just the individual ones.
I'm proud and that's not that weird nowadays, but uh, Many back then, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Remember that being and like weirdly funny and meta in like the, the 90s or some shit? Somebody told me they played that game. I didn't play any of the Star Oceans. It was on PlayStation, but it was just one of those series that I missed out on. And I like the this ending, like, yeah, the ending totally shits the bed. You're like in a video game. In a typical like, what? What? With Excuse me. Terms, speaking, those times are so it was either low. hit or miss you for some people because be I think that's the one that, that's being remade, right? Than having or had been remade. Downtime where you're not doing anything. It's not easy sifting through all of history and picking what to include. For Aura, we wanted to offer a fresh perspective, so we looked at cultures and that's societies okay. throughout the millennia with the broadest lens possible. Where this approach really shines is in our leaders. Leaders are so often seen as military personnel or prominent government figures. But leaders come in so many different forms. They're thought leaders, scientific and cultural prodigies, and many more. Each leader in Aura has a number of special abilities determined by their personality traits, as well as a powerful and unique leader trait informed by Am their I playing that Blaze Blue Entropy world. game that's With coming out soon? Global roster, we know players Am I will find playing that the Blaze Blue play. Mobile Roguelite? Even a few that may surprise them with how fun it is when those leaders are yeah. handed the reins of power. I am. I certainly am. For us at Oxide, player feedback is the only way to really understand what you're making. Planner, I know. It gives us that priceless perspective from the people we're making our It's not a mobile game. You. Building the game alongside real Am I playing the Blaze Blue augmented reality? Feedback. In the end, we believe this makes for a deeper connection between yeah, the players and the game. Planner, I know. One of my favorite examples is when we first introduced the concept of dangerous wildlife to the game. It turns out in our oh, first it's not augmented reality. It was maybe a little Am I getting on the new Blaze Blue Entropy swap. ride at we Disneyland? We probably make a change when one of our insiders made a yeah, forum post that was just I'm playing it right cougars, now. Cougars, cougars, cougars! I hate cougars. Someone get these feline demons away from me. I'm happy to report, based on more recent feedback, that I think we ended up in a good place with the overall threat level of mountain lions to a player's citizenry. It's oh, am I taking the Blaze Blue Entropy college course that is like currently no going on? And we're so at UC Irvine or some shit. Line. Yeah, we I am. can't wait for players I'm to get right their hands on the game later this year. But the launch of Ara is only the beginning. We are going to maintain our insider program after the release date and continue to listen to players and support the game into the future. On behalf of everyone at Oxide Berkeley, Games, thank you for joining us today. We can't wait for you to play Ara and to create your own history. That's in fall. Okay. Okay. There's another spot over there, brother. There is. Someone else gonna show up? Is this? I wonder if Indiana is gonna be not Harrison Ford, or if they've already talked about that, right? Hej och välkommen till Uppsala Sverige här hos Machine Games. We are really excited to finally be able to share our work on Indiana Jones. Since the first film came out, Indiana Jones has always represented the ultimate adventure. Even today, it's one of the most iconic Harrison franchises Gord? in pop culture. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indiana Jones. You will see through his eyes and experience a journey that we hope lives up to the proud legacy. This is a third of person Jones. game, right? When Todd Howard first told us about his vision for the game, we knew we would be a very good fit to help bring it to life. I've wanted to make an Indiana Jones game forever. I'd had this idea for what it would be like and the story. There's red flags what going off in my head. After what period of Suddenly. his life it was in what kind of arc he was going to have. Well, red and flags. As the years went on, I thought, who would be like They're the big. best They're like studio nine in the foot world tall red flags. to make this? And it was my friends at Machine Games. So like I wanted to make this money. Lucas I wanted to make this game for the being, least you know, amount of money possible. I was nervous because, look, it's, you know, Indiana Jones. And their response was just overwhelmingly positive and just that excitement. We spent all our money on the IP. The project. And they have just been so And we have hired a diligent team of 6,000 hamsters to it's make a game. It's been a long time. I've been a fan of this my These producers life. you're talking to here are directing to the poor hamsters. The team here has been up to. Let's take our first look at the new Indiana Jones game. Oh, God. Okay. Let me tell you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. 
While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. You're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. <laughs> it is. It's kind of a weird scene, but it looks good. <clears throat> Myths, history, just different ways to interpret the past. Pretty good sound alike. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried, just waiting to be found. You can't just run away from your problems, Indiana. Watch me. Of course. Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line, through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. It's like, what? What is it? Is it third person? Is it first person? I, I don't, I don't know. These are all yeah, obviously right, first person. Then it's just shots of third person stuff. Trust me, it ain't a walk in the park. Okay then. Is it both? What do you mean Ninth person. of the fallen angels protector of the Chukumani the great circle <laughs> you have any idea how old that was? Indiana Jones is looks such okay. an iconic. It does. Character. It looks okay. It means so much to so many. It people. looks all right. Everyone here at the studio has their own indie stories and memories. Most of us grew up with his adventures and have been fans of the movies and the character for years. Will I play it though? He's Maybe. He's a brilliant archaeologist. He's a charismatic. The problem is that like he's <clears throat> passionate and determined. The Indians, and jo the us, Indiana Jones formula has adventure. already been turned into a much, much, much better game. To tell a right? New Indiana like a really good game. And audience. it's called Uncharted. Our game is all about Maybe not Uncharted 1, but like ever since Uncharted 2, it's like we got the ultimate Indiana Jones things. games. For us at Machine Games, we do that best through first So I'm kind of curious, like, it's the ideal perspective you know, and, and for this thing, how much of this is going to be like that? We believe that being you have, you have, un, you have Indiana Jones, but he's a mass team, murderer, right? Each action and there's like just no own. way you're going to get an Indiana Jones game where he's not a mass murderer. It's cracking your whip. He needs to, he needs to murder people. He's, people. These bitches got to die. Seeing your knuckles go bloody in a fist fight. All of these moments are much more intense in first person. But we still want you to have those moments. Seeing his iconic silhouette with yeah. the hat. So this is whip, like... And so for things like, so like traversal scenes, and stuff, an environmental traversal. Okay, there we go. We pull the camera back for a third person view. How weird! Yeah, that, no wonder I was confused Indiana by like Jones what the heck the, the game is. Is set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade. When our game begins, Indiana is working at Marshall College. He wakes up in the middle of the night to the sounds of a break-in and rushes to confront the thief in the college museum. The mysterious giant of a man makes off with what seems to be a historically insignificant artifact, sparking Indiana's curiosity. Who the hell are you? Following the trail, Indiana heads to the Vatican, hoping to learn why this particular relic was stolen, and discovers that things aren't what they appear. 
He starts pulling at the, the strings man? of a mystery, and it all unravels until he has no choice <laughs> but to see it through to the end, whatever the end may be. <clears throat> On next plate or road, <clears throat> stop. Need help, stop. Maybe in back, stop. Dude. Indiana, just call him on your cell phone, bro. What are you doing? That had to be one of our just use AOL Instant Messenger, you stupid idiot. We were making. Jeez, man. Be Indy, so unrealistic. Using his wits to get through the situation. The most authentic Indiana Jones experience we can make is the one that makes you think first. <laughs> what the hell do I do with this? <laughs> what the sure, hell is this? Sure, there will be some obstacles that will be more easily overcome with the revolver or a gun taken from a disarmed guard. But I think most of the time you'll have more fun and, to be honest, a more genuine indie experience by finding more clever ways to solve a problem. We Bob, 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 shots of him just like dual wielding all the these guns. Get around <laughs> Bob, 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 Bob. observing enemy patrols and using them to your advantage, or using the tools at your disposal, like the whip. It's an amazing global adventure with action propelling you through your journey. We have these really diverse environments for you to explore. Indy's journey will take him to the forgotten temples of Sukhothai, the pyramids of Egypt the snow-peaked Himalayas, and beyond. We look carefully at each location and the time period the game is set in, and we're trying to make it as authentic and accurate as possible. We love creating rich, vibrant worlds, and in this game, we also had the goal of making it feel like a true cinematic Indiana Jones adventure. One of the biggest ways to do that is with the music. John Williams is the original composer for the indie films, and we're really lucky to have found Gordy Hubb, a composer who's been able to capture Williams' essence with his score for The Great Circle. Big score. We also take a very movie-like approach to things like cinematics. We're very physical with our production style. We use a lot of stunt actors. Things like this help us bridge the gap between making a game and making a movie. <laughs> and of course, our characters do a lot to help bring. Watch our stunt actors well. die Basically, live, Gina and then you hire another one. Protagonist, where Indy is pursuing answers just for the sake of curiosity, Gina has a personal stake in getting to the bottom of the core mystery. Gina is an investigative reporter who has a lot riding on this adventure. She's been tracking a lead for some time, and now she's found an ally in this determined American professor. She's also Their a nun. are intertwined, and they'll need each other in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Elena? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, then. Let's see if we can keep up. Fine. What do you mean if I can keep up? We always love our villains. A little bit. I think we might yeah. have found our favorite one yet in Emmerich Voss. He's this intensely psychological man. He's obsessed with the human mind and manipulating it. He's highly intelligent and the perfect. And here is his friend. 3D model. They're both brilliant people, compelled by the passions and obsessions, but driven down wildly different roads. He creeps up on you and gets under your skin like he gets under in the skin. It's captivating. Dead and forgotten in the sense of Africa. One of our models for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is adventure first. But in every indie adventure, there are always those moments where he finds himself in the action. That's been one of those balancing acts for us, and we've ended up with this sort of hybrid experience that mixes melee combat, stealth, and gunplay. How you approach any given situation is up to you. You may choose to sneak around an enemy patrol, or maybe you'll just pick up a shovel and whack them on the back of their head. And when you can't use your wits, you got in this most iconic tool. Just like you see in the movies, one of our goals has been to make the whip as fun and multi-purposed as possible. We want it integrated into every aspect of the game. You can use it as a traversal tool to make your way around the environment. You can use it as a distraction. And yes, you can absolutely use it in combat. And later you can attach Everything grenades to it. <laughs> and hopefully a little bit more. Puzzles are a key feature in our game. The spirit of discovery is so important to Indiana Jones. Obviously, there are a handful of puzzles on the main path, but a lot of the puzzles are optional and are just there for the players who want to experience them. Epic traps, small secrets, 
and hidden puzzles that blend right in with their surroundings. One thing I love about our game is the level of interactivity that we have. We have this world of mystery where anything could potentially happen. You know what is a puzzle game that was like interactive environment puzzles? That I didn't actually hate, and I mean, we 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 scorned together, bros. Was actually scorn, you know? That's all that game's gameplay really was. That's all it really was. Felt like some like early 2000s fucking PC game, but we were scorning together. I was just looking around at shit like, how do we move forward? Machine Games is known for creating these It wasn't that bad. It was just a fucking weird game. Surprising twists and immersive narratives. <clears throat> it's exciting for us that we have been able to stay so true. Dark Seed was better. Franchise <laughs> and create such an authentic experience. While still this doesn't look that bad. I mean, I think of all the games that we've seen we today, this is the this is the one that I would actually want to give a shot. You know. With the franchise or not. Because at the heart of Indiana Jones is an I think I want to play this a little bit more than like Senua sequel. That's something I'd be I'd be fairly be excited to try this one I'm out. I'm also very excited to announce that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be coming later this year. And we cannot so it's a 2024 wait game. to share more soon. Todd's looking at shit. Hey man, uh, dude, like, think how much worse it could be. It could be, like, a different face than Harrison Ford, and, like, a completely different voice, right? Because of weird licensing issues or something. It could have been. Ah, uh, that's it. Sizzle reel, that's definitely it. Well, this was okay. Right? Does this put, like, a ridiculous ton of confidence <coughs> into Xbox's 2024? Not exactly. B minus? Mm, I'd say more of a C minus. I was at least entertained. But dude, they like only showed like a, a few things. Is this, if this is like the start, it's a pretty slow start. I think it's more of a C minus. It's not a D. Because at least everything looks like pretty good, right? I'm not into everything they're showing. But, like, think of... They they're, they went for variety in this, right? They're like, okay, so let's show this, you know, very Bethesda-if, Bethesda-ish, sort of, like, Morrowind kind of game, which is what Avowed kind of is, it feels like. All right. And then they show, like, a big strategy game. Okay. Strat sim game. And then they show their big cinematic, you know, experience adventure, which is Senua. And then they're like, here's a JRPG. It's on Xbox. It's like, okay, cool. And then, you know, finally, it's like, here's our action Indiana Jones game. It's like, this is, it feels like they're specifically targeting variety here. They're trying to get as many people as possible. But I think, like, all of these games, like, feel kind of samey, and then you have, like, the Square Enix game is the only, is the only, like, weird issue, right? Like, so many of the games, like, look kind of samey in some ways in terms of, like, artistic style, uh, at least to me. And then you get, like, this weird Square Enix game, and it's like, oh, that feels definitely different. It's very Xboxy, right? It comes across as very safe and very Xboxy. You know, you could have stuck, like, Granted, like Redfall in here and it wasn't out yet and it would have made perfect sense. It just sort of lines up with their overall expectations and stuff like that. It's not the worst thing ever. Like some, you might not be interested in many of these games, but none of them specifically look bad.